to switch my seating arrangements considering that Connecticut's been in the state of Lower Uncton for a while. But anyway, a new Sonic game is out, so I gotta review it. I would have done it a couple weeks ago, but we know what happened. When Sonic Boom was announced, all that was shown was the silhouettes of Sonic, Tails, Roid Rage, Knuckles, and Amy. Already I knew that they went with some drastic redesigns, but when the final characters were shown off, I'll admit, I hated them. And I mean I hated them with a passion, refusing to discuss it because of the drastic redesign. I often say that I'm not a purist in any sense and will welcome change. But this was redesigning a gaming icon. It'd be like Disney drastically redesigning Mickey Mouse. From Steamboat Willie to now, there's really no difference other than some added detail. When Sonic was given an updated look, making him look taller with a few extra details, his image was still a strong looking reminiscent of his classic one. But with this new design for Sonic, I can tolerate the blue on his arms, but the redesign of his shoes? I don't like it. Sonic's shoes are iconic, and I know it sounds silly, but imagine if they changed Mario's hat from a Gatsby cap to a regular baseball cap and shaved off his mustache. Yeah, you know it's Mario, but it's not the same thing. I've warmed up to the new designs though, and they're alright, but I still prefer the modern designs. Thankfully, we'll still get the Sonic design that we all know and love. In fact, Sonic Team in Japan hated the art style that Big Red Button went with. So much so that it made them physically sick. And Big Red Button thought that was funny. No, it's not. You done goofed. Sonic Boom The Rise of Lyric is supposed to be a prequel and video game tie-in to the new Sonic Boom cartoon on Cartoon Network. So we have a video game based off of a cartoon based off of a video game. You know how history tends to repeat itself? Well, this happened before with Street Fighter the movie The Game, which was based on the Street Fighter live-action movie, which was based on the Street Fighter video games. People loved the games but hated the movie and hated the game based off the movie that was based off the games even more. Now all we need is a game based on a movie that's based on a game that's based on a cartoon that's based on a video game that's based on a comic that's based on a video game which is based on another video game and will reach full video game inception. And I know everyone's gonna ask me this, but yeah, I've watched the Sonic Boom cartoon and I really enjoyed it. And and even though I hate the art style in the game, it works much better in the show and the cartoon is much better animated than the video game. It's also how a Sonic cartoon should be done. It's got the right amount of humor and comedy that sets up the action that happens later in the episode. The writing is just pure genius and is the best Sonic cartoon ever made. Better than Sonic Sad AM and miles ahead of Sonic X, which was a show that was on the air in America for 11 years. Meaning that the entire series, which consists of 78 episodes, went full circle a minimum of 7 times if each episode is shown once a week. We can probably bump that up to 10 if we count back-to-back -back episodes and marathons. Sonic X, for when you want to watch a cartoon about a lonely little rich white kid that's into bestiality. Sonic Boom is also the last of the three exclusive Sonic games that were part of a deal with Nintendo and Sega had agreed to. And as mentioned before, it does serve as a prequel to the Sonic Boom cartoon which Sega plans on expanding with other merchandise. But Sonic Boom is not replacing the modern Sonic that we all know and love. So hopefully we'll be seeing something from Sonic Team next year, or at least Sonic's 25th anniversary due in 2016. Sonic Boom The Rise of Lyric was developed by Big Red Button, a developer who is comprised of mostly former Naughty Dog employees. Well, used to now, as after this game was released, there was a massive layoff. And during development, some of the people in charge left the company because they didn't like the way the game was going. So this game is their first, only, and after shaking the Magic 8-Ball and getting the result of Outlook Not Good, probably last game. Rise of Lyric has been utterly slammed when it comes to mainstream reviews and it averages about 3 out of 10. In fact, it's rated worse than Sonic 2006, which averages 5 out of 10. But is this game really as bad as everyone says it is, or is everyone jumping on the Sonic Sucks bandwagon? Again. Well, all that will be answered at the end. Graphically, I would say the game is passable. The Wii U isn't a powerhouse, so I'm not expecting anything to blow me away, but considering that the system made Bayonetta 2 and Smash Brothers look like a PS4 game, I can understand where some people saying that the game looks bad are coming from. The models look good and the textures are alright. You won't notice any pixelation unless you zoom in really close. The environments look really good in an imaginative sense. The animation is really fluid and cartoonish looking, although there are times when the characters just stand there and talk, looking rather low budget when compared to everything else. However, the one thing that is bad is that the game tries to run at 60 frames per second, but is unable to even maintain 30. It drops so low it actually affects gameplay. I really enjoyed the music though. It's all orchestrated nicely and I love the music that plays when running on the roads or swinging on zip lines. The voice acting is really good and there's times where the actors portray the characters very well. 
Sonic is Sonic, Tails is very brainy, using big words and longer sentences, Knuckles isn't very bright and serves as a comic relief, and in the cartoon he's even dumber. Amy isn't an annoying one-dimensional character and is more fleshed out instead of having a one-track mind of marrying Sonic. However, the banter does get really annoying. They comment whenever there's a bounce pad around and when it's used. They talk about how they love rings or how roads are made for Sonic, or how they'll tell you what to do as you're doing it or even before you do it. This game really holds your hand, so much so that it's incredibly annoying. But when you actually do need help, that's when it shuts up. I got very annoyed when the game would tell me what to do when it was obvious, but in the hub world where I needed to go someplace, it wouldn't even give me a hint. Clicking the left analog stick gives you a barely noticeable arrow, but there's times where it won't even appear. When it comes down to controls, I didn't find any problems with it. On the rare occasion, the game didn't respond to any of my button presses, but it happened so rarely that I can only remember one time when it happened. You're able to jump, double jump, you're given a standard attack and a special attack, an energy whip and a dodge. As you can tell, Sonic Boom isn't your typical Sonic game, but something else entirely. Instead of your usual high-speed platformer, Sonic Boom is a much slower game. In fact, it's much like a Jack and Daxter game, which isn't surprising considering who the developers are. Your main objective consists of traversing through the areas and fighting robots. I found myself enjoying the platforming and exploration. I feel that it was done quite competently. I was able to jump around with the characters, using Sonic Spin Dash to go up ramps, or Tails' ability to glide on air currents. Amy's beam balancing on my first playthrough was absolutely miserable, but my second playthrough was actually quite pleasant, and climbing on walls and ceilings with knuckles made for some good exploration. All of their abilities allowed me to grab extra treasure chests and princess crowns. I also like using the inner beam on zip lines, and I enjoyed how it added to the platforming aspect. I had a really enjoyable time going through the stages. I loved exploring it because it reminded me a lot of Jack, Ratchet, and the Sly games, and I like those games a lot. And it's interesting to see Sonic do his own take on it, even though he doesn't belong in it. When I was going through the levels, I enjoyed looking at how creative this new world for Sonic is, just taking in all the architecture which feels very inspired from Jack and Daxter. The puzzles are pretty easy, but I found them to be enjoyable and fun to do as they required exploration to complete. However, the hub worlds need some serious improvement. They are way too big, and this is just where the lack of speed really shows. The hub worlds, and there are two of them, are just so big and empty, and you wish you could run from one place to the other, because it would be so much faster than the leisurely trot that the characters move at. But there is a fast travel system to ease the pain. The hub worlds are incredibly boring, and while they're side quests, there isn't that many to do and are a waste of time, and are only required to grab glyphs which give the characters added abilities. The combat, it's simple, but not bad, nor is it good. It's just simple. You mash the Y button to attack in a single string of combos, and if you hold it, you can do a charge attack. X will do a more powerful but slower attack, and if you really want to have an easy time, use the inner beam to lasso the enemy and throw them off the stage or into a hazard and they'll be killed instantly. There's also no lives, and if you die you'll respawn less than 10 feet away. And you shouldn't die as rings are your health bar and the enemies drop rings when they're destroyed. The boss fights do feel pretty epic. The mechanical worm and Eggman bosses are the same. Lasso and throw stuff at them. The Metal Sonic fight is pretty fun but you just smack stuff into him, and Lyric fight is just pummeling him. I don't think you should expect much of a challenge. It's a video game tie-in to a kid's cartoon. Although there are some people who are expecting it to be Batman Arkham series level of combat. Why would you even think that? I will say that the enemies do take too long to be destroyed, so combat can drag on for a while if you're unable to throw them into a pit or a stage hazard, but it's rare when there isn't something that one hit KO them. But now onto the speed sections. This aspect of the game is bad. Very bad. First off, the frame rate chokes to like 5 frames a second. Secondly, the camera is terrible and can't keep up with Sonic. Third, the roads are way too curvy. And lastly, the game is pretty much on autopilot here, requiring little to no interaction from the player. The first three complaints, the frame rate, camera lag, and twisted roads tie into each other. Because the camera lags behind so much, you'll find yourself smashing into obstacles. And the frame rate being so low, it makes it even worse. As you go to turn a corner in one frame, and when the next frame appears, you've already hit the object, and the camera is too far behind that you'll hit another. But the last issue is that these sections are on autopilot. You could put the controller down and they'll keep going. I've heard people complain about Sonic Generations being boost to win. Well, you'll be hating these sections in Sonic Boom even more. In Generations, it combined the road running aspects of Sonic Adventure with the platforming elements of the Genesis games. And there is no complaint to be made because boosting in that game is optional. You're complaining about an optional feature. You might as well complain about being able to transmogrify your gear in World of Warcraft. However, in Sonic Boom, these speed sections have you constantly boosting. There's dash rings, dash panels, 
bounce pads, everything here is designed to keep you going at full speed. But these speed stages are only for transitioning from the hub world to the stages, and they're over in about 30 seconds. Oh, they're still bad, but they're nowhere near the prolonged torture of Sonic and the Secret Rings. The story isn't bad, but leaves you wanting more. It's your basic stop the bad guy story by collecting the seven Dragon Balls, I mean seven Chaos Emeralds, I mean eight Chaos Crystals by going to places A, B, and C. Because this is a new continuity, you wonder how Sonic met Tails, Amy, and Knuckles. It's not explained at all, nor is Shadow, who appears to be a boss fight through time and is pretty much just there to be a jerk. Lyric, who has a really stupid name for a main bad guy, has no real origin. He's mad at a group of people called the Ancients because the Chaos Crystals made him sick, and that the medicine the Ancients had couldn't heal him so he has to live in a robotic suit. It's just a really lame reason for him to be a bad guy, and even when he's defeated, they just leave him tied up. The only real origin is how they met Styx the Jungle Badger, which is just a passing mention, pretty much literally, because you run into her and she takes in garbage and gives you princess crowns in exchange for it. That's it. She's only playable in the 3DS version, and speaking of, one really stupid thing is that to increase your health, it's behind a $40 paywall. You need to link the Rise of Lyric with the Shadowed Crystal so that way you can increase your health meter, and I don't plan on getting the Shattered Crystal anytime soon. But this method of increasing your health is worse than microtransactions or DLC that was purposely cut. This requires the purchase of another game. Yeah, it's a story aimed at kids, but kids deserve something a little bit more fleshed out, because they're gonna grow into adults and may one day go back and replay this game. Is Sonic Boom a bad game? No, it's not. Not by a long shot. It's nowhere near the poor quality of Sonic 06, and anybody who says so is not only exaggerating, but downright lying through their teeth. I know of the infinite jump glitch, but that's something that you'd have to try to find, not something you'd find through normal play. And I glitched through the floor one time. The frame rate is bad, but it's only during certain sections, and sometimes the characters will pop into view if they lag behind for too long. But there's nothing game breaking. There's nothing making the game crash. There's no invisible walls that you'll slam into and fall to your death. There's the occasional sound glitch, like the sound Tails makes when he's hovering, playing when it shouldn't, but it's all benign stuff. Stuff that could have been smoothed out with some extra polish. The game isn't perfect, but it's far from unplayable. I was able to beat this game twice with no issues. However, I think that this game does serve as an example to another problem in the gaming industry, which is pretty much that there's extreme bias with no gray areas. I find it hard to read reviews where a broken game like Assassin's Creed Unity are heavily praised, yet it's infamous for all its technical problems, like Game Informer giving it an 8 out of 10. How can a game that's so incomplete get scores that high, yet Sonic Boom just needed a little bit more polish, averages 3 out of 10? How does that make sense? Isn't something in your mind telling you that there's gotta be something wrong? Even YouTubers out there like Some Call Me Johnny and Pro Jared are making Sonic Boom sound a lot worse than what it is. I'm siding with Clement here, it's an average game. When I hear people say that Sonic Boom looks like a PS2 game, I have to question their eyesight or memory as it looks like a 360 or PS3 game. If you want to know what a PS2 game looks like, go watch my God Hand or Sonic Heroes review. That's what a PS2 game looked like. People saying Sonic Boom is a bad game is a classic case of, it's different so it sucks, plain and simple. It's a good platformer with simplistic combat with the only bad things being the frame rate which lags in the high speed road sections and the inability to increase your speed in the large hub worlds. I will say that this game is short. You can beat it in about 6 hours, which includes cutscenes. And it's a one and done type of game. A second playthrough just doesn't have the thrill of the first. But I don't think it really matters at this point. No matter what, people will say that Sonic sucks and that he'll never be as good as he was in the Genesis days. But the reality is that there was only a few bad games and no one is willing to let Sonic live those down and continue to let those few games plague him no matter what. Some of the blame is on Sega though, as they tend to change Sonic's gameplay very quickly instead of letting something set in. Unleashed day stages, colors and generations gave us the high speed platforming we all wanted, but they changed that with Lost World, which was good and made Sonic more like Mario but the new mechanics were not explained very well, which shunned players because no one knew how to work it unless they experimented on their own. You know what Sonic games are? They're presidents. Everyone always hates the current one, and they say that the last one was better. 
I'm dead serious. Whenever we get a new president, people bash that person constantly. Then when they're out of office, everyone likes them and praises what they did even though they hated it when that person was in office. But then there's a new one in office and everyone can't shut up about how much they hate them. Sonic games are treated the same way. There are people already saying that Lost World was better, and there's even people saying that they like the Werehog stages from Sonic Unleashed, something that very few people enjoyed, but are now praising it. Some people bring up the Sonic cycle, where when a game is first announced, hopes are raised, then when more information is released, the hope plummets, and when the game is released, critics slam it. But the reality of the Sonic cycle is this. When a new Sonic game is announced, people groan about it and say that Sega should just let Sonic die, but critics are saying good things about the game. Then the game is released, and the game is critically slammed, and everyone hates it. Finally, everyone praises the previous game that they hated before. So for Sonic Boom, while it's hated now, it will probably be seen as an underrated diamond in the rough that just needed some more polish to make it truly shine. The funny thing is, it's a Sonic game. You'll buy it no matter what anyone says, even if it is just average. I just recommend getting it at a discount or renting it first.